Welcome back. This is the 20th show in the series Rehabilitation Coming Soon, in which we've been discussing mass incarceration in Hawaii and throughout the United States. I'm Bob Merce, and I'll be sitting in as host today for our regular host, Aaron Wills, who will be returning, I believe, next week. Our very distinguished guest today is Moses Haya, the executive director of the Native Hawaiian Legal Corporation. Moses was a staff attorney at the Native Wine Legal Corporation before he became executive director. And he, is, uh, as a staff attorney, led the way in, in some landmark cases involving water rights and uh, Native Hawaiian uh, burial cases. Before uh, joining uh, the Native Wine Legal Corporation, Moses was in private practice and uh, he worked with the Hawaiian Advisory Council and litigated a, a, a number of water issues, uh, particularly concerning the Waiholi uh, Ditch. He is a graduate of the University of Hawaii and the William Richardson School of Law. And we are very happy and proud to have him with us today. Welcome, Moses. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Our viewers have probably heard about Native Hawaiian Legal Corporation, but for those who haven't, I wonder if you could tell us a little bit about what it is and, and what the Native Hawaiian Legal Corporation does. Okay, well, you know, just to give a little bit of a background on it, there is a bit of a cultural renaissance that began in the early 70s, uh, and it was centered around land um, and, and Hawaiians way of seeing land as family and wanting to ensure that um, whatever could be done to protect that land was, uh, was done. And so um, the Native Hawaiian Legal Corporation actually started off as a, a referral service um, in 1974 trying to get people who needed help, for example, with quiet title actions where uh, a lawsuit would be filed and the plaintiff would be seeking to quiet title to the entire property. In other words, to get a court decision saying that title to this property is clear and in your name, plaintiff. And a lot of the named defendants were Hawaiians. And then just, just based upon history, Hawaiians were you know, living on the land, using the land, and so they became, for the most part, the defendants defending those kinds of cases. And so that's how we began, and we s slowly um, moved into a Native Hawaiian rights nonprofit law firm, a public interest law firm, where today we um, do anything from access rights to rights for uh, Native Hawaiian prisoners for their religious freedom. Um, we water rights, um, being able to basically be a Hawaiian in Hawaii. And, and maybe I should make a disclosure here. I have it down in my notes to do it a little bit earlier, but um, I'm on the board of the Native Hawaiian Legal Corporation. I want everyone to, to understand that and, and proud to be um, on, the, on the board and a part of uh, what I think is a great organization. Thank you. Um, you mentioned the uh, prison cases, and I know we can't talk about them in specifically because some of them are still pending, and that wouldn't be proper. But in general, what what are the issues that, that the, um, the Native Hawaiian Legal Corporation sees as being important enough to litigate uh, in the context of, of the prison setting here in Hawaii? Well, I think it's just a matter of equality when it comes to the, the right to engage in one's religious beliefs. If you look at the prison system, you'll see that Christians, for the most part, you know, they Christians who are inmates have a, a number of opportunities to engage in their Christian practice. And that's not necessarily the case for others. It's, there are other religions that are starting to get to 
that point. But when we started um, looking into the issues, we saw that Native Hawaiians were probably the least likely to receive um, opportunities to engage in traditional and customary relig re Hawaiian religious practices. And, and why is it important for Hawaiians who are incarcerated to uh, have access to uh, cultural practices and be allowed to, to, to engage in those practices? You know, the best way for me to, to uh, approach that topic is to speak from my own experiences. Okay. I was fortunate enough to, to never spend time behind bars, um, at least, you know, prison bars. I had, I, I created bars <laughs> Other of my bars. own. Other bars. <laughs> right. But, so, the only thing that separates me, this is the way that I see it, from um, Native Hawaiian inmates is that I never got caught for some of the things that clearly would have landed me in prison. I just I really got lucky in that way. Um, and so that didn't stop me from continuing to get into trouble. Um, and w what I started to see was I was going to a school, um, Kamehameha schools, and while it wasn't necessarily the message that I was being delivered, the way that I took that message in um, turned into, it's not such a good thing for me to be Hawaiian because the, the statistics prove it out. Um, I have a better chance than anyone else um, of ending up in prison, of uh, being unemployed, uh, homeless. So all the things that people, for the most part, don't want to be number one in, I saw that as an opportunity because I was a Hawaiian. And so I had a very skewed opinion of what it was to be Hawaiian. Um, and got to the point where, like in the 70s, when that renaissance was happening and there were these activists, um, over Koho'olawe, Kalama Valley, I would look at them and I'd say, please stop it, you're embarrassing me. Because, um, you know, we need to become the best Americans we can become. And while that was, a surface kind of thing for me, I feel deep down inside is today where I understand the real issue was and the, the genesis of all the, the trouble and heartache that I started to feel because I, I couldn't buy that deep down inside despite um, the, the kinds of, um, you know, the the numbers that were out there that showing what where Hawaiians were socioeconomically. And as a result of that, um, I fought as hard as I could and ultimately, you know, became that statistic um, in, in another way. I had problems with, um, alcohol and drugs. And what happened for me, fortunately, was I was at a meeting um, and this older Hawaiian gentleman shared and said that he was proud to be Hawaiian. And uh, that struck a chord in me because I couldn't understand that. So I went up to him and we talked for a little bit, and although he never explained what he meant by that, um, he just said, you know, hang around. And so from that point on, I started to look at what I had taken on um, and defined me as a Hawaiian, and I started to see that it wasn't truly what defined me as a Hawaiian. And um, the kind of person that I am being very apologetic for being Hawaiian. I am now going to be on the other end of the spectrum about being 
really proud to be Hawaiian and shouting it from the <clears throat> from the mountaintops. And I've learned through Hawaiian culture and other ways of seeing that the Hawaiian that I am needs to get to a point of balance. And for me, that's what will define me, how balanced I can be in, the way, in my views, and not giving up who I am as a Hawaiian. But like it, the example is, doing the work of, at Native Hawaiian Legal Corporation, there are a lot of people out there that look at us as anti-development. And that's clearly not the case. Okay, we can, you can say we're pro a culture, but ultimately we're about balance. And when it comes to that, what we're saying is, what I see is people come here and they want to be in Hawaii because of all the special things about this place. What makes this place special? A lot of that is aloha, Hawaiian values. Uh, a lot of that gets sold, um, you know, in the tourism industry. Um, and I don't want to see what provides the specialness about this place lost because we don't see it in its, for its true value. And that makes us who we are. Um, so I work to ensure that anything that is going to impact Hawaiian culture does it in a way that it doesn't get rid of it, that it, it pays respect to it. And you know, I can only see that continuing to have those special things about Hawaii provide, even if you're looking at it from a, a capitalist point of view, continues to provide that value you need. Mm -hmm. And if you, um, if you continue to uh, waste away at it, you start to lose that, um, and then we're just any mm -hmm. old place. But so, kind of got off the track. We're talking about rehabilitation. Well, and and, and so I, I take it from from what you're saying is that it, uh, it as you you form this view of yourself as a Hawaiian and what it means uh, to be Hawaiian, and if you're unable to to be Hawaiian in prison, then you start to have all the problems that you were having. Uh, because, you know, because they've, particularly, I guess, if you're in Arizona, one of the 1,400 uh, prisoners in Arizona, where you're, you're you know, you're in basically in the middle of a Native American desert, um, and uh, kind of hard to practice Hawaiian values there, unless somebody is going out of their way to help you. Right. You know, I don't see any difference Despite the the change in location of our you know our mental um, where we are mentally about what it is for me to be a Hawaiian, and unless and until I start to deal with that and start to get to a point where I can um, form a foundation of what it means for me to be a Hawaiian. Um, and I think that culture, um, a way of being Hawaiian um, through cultural practices has allowed me to get a different perspective on what it is for me to be Hawaiian and to start to be able, like that gentleman who shared said, being proud to be a Hawaiian. Mm -hmm. And so when it comes to opportunities, especially in prison, for one to engage in practices that provide th that foundation of, of what a Hawaiian um, is in terms of his or her relationship to land, to water, to sky, to the world, um, I think we start to, to get on the way 
of having a firm foundation and finding out who we are so that there's a greater possibility to begin to act in different ways, um, think in different ways. Okay. Uh, we've come to a point where we need, need to take a break, so we're going to leave for a moment. Um, this is Rehabilitation Coming Soon. I'm Bob Merce here with Moses Haya of the Native Hawaiian Legal Corporation, and we'll be back in just a minute. Aloha. My name is John Waihe, and I actually had a small part to do with what's happening today. Served actually in public office. But if you don't already know that, here's a chance to learn more about what's happening in our state by joining me for Talk Story with John Waihe every other Monday. Thank you, and I look forward to your seeing us in the future. Aloha, I'm Kaui Lucas, host of Hawaii is My Mainland, here on Think Tech Hawaii every Friday afternoon at 3 p.m. Start your Pauhana weekend off with the show where I talk to people about issues pertinent to Hawaii. You can see my previous shows at my blog, kauilucas.com, and also on Think Techs. Welcome back. Again, Bob Merce, we're here with uh, Moses Hayes of the Native Hawaiian Legal Corporation, and we've been talking about Hawaiians in prison. And uh, before we go on, Moses, um, you mentioned that you were not in prison, but you were lucky, <laughs> and that was the main reason that you weren't. Uh, and I'm glad you weren't, because Hawaiians, uh, just a few statistics that I've come across recently, um, make up about 26% of the general population in Hawaii, but they're close to 40% of the, of the prison population. And a few years ago, the, Native, the uh, Office of Hawaiian Affairs issued a study that showed uh, clearly that Hawaiians were overrepresented in every segment of the criminal justice system. Um, th they were found guilty more often than, than other groups. They had, went to prison more often. They get longer sentences. They get uh, uh, longer parole periods. And, and there's a you know, complete uh, 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 inequity with regard to the Hawaiians who are in prison. And, and that's clearly one of the issues that has to be addressed. Uh, at, at some point, um, but getting getting back, uh, what what kinds of things would would you think would be important uh, within the uh, the correctional system that would support Native Hawaiians in their belief uh, and, and that they are Hawaiian and in their pride in being Hawaiian and their ability to really practice? What would you like to 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 see the Department of Public Safety doing for Hawaiian inmates, given that they are overrepresented and, and, and constitute probably the largest single group of people in the prison system. Yeah. So this is our home. It certainly doesn't feel like it. Um, I think you're well aware that there are two official languages in Hawaii, one being Hawaiian. And that language is almost lost. And that language holds a significant um, tie to what it means to be a Hawaiian. You learn the language, you start to think as a Hawaiian. You start to act as a Hawaiian. So I think um, if we're really trying to rehabilitate or provide opportunities um, to, to return Hawaiians back to society, and we're, we're obligated to give them those opportunities that are going to provide them with the tools that will let them become the Hawaiian that they should be in Hawaii. Um, and, you know, it's a, whole, it, it's a constitutional um, requirement. Um, that certain um, practices be allowed, um, religious practices. Um, and, you know, that was a, a long-fought battle. In the 1978 Hawaii Constitution was changed to provide constitutional protection to 
Native Hawaiian traditional and customary practices for culture, for really religious purposes. Now, what, what does that constitutional provision say? I mean, not quoting it, but what, what's, the, what's the heart of it? it, it it's basically to say that this state has an obligation to ensure that um, Native Hawaiian traditional and customary practices for religious, cultural, and other purposes are protected, they're allowed to be engaged in, um, and the underlying, I believe the underlying basis for that is what's happened through the years with respect to just, you know, the overall loss to the point of almost n totally gone on the culture of Hawaiians. And it's no wonder when you have Hawaiians who have lost who they are because they don't have their, you know, cultural foundation and underpinnings. Um, that they're going to be um, without a rudder or foundation and, you know, working from a point of um, a, a center of knowing who they are as a Hawaiian. Obviously, Native Hawaiian Legal Corporation has had to litigate some of these issues. Um, uh, do you think they're doing enough to bring these constitutional protections in, into the prison system? When you say they... Department of Public Safety uh, or, or, the, or the state generally? Well, you know, I'm, I obviously am not the most objective person when it comes to that, and especially given my, you know, my personal and professional background. Um, but um, if we really want to see change or offer change for these overrepresented individuals in prison. There's no doubt in my mind that, that offering these kinds of uh, programs um, and uh, the ability to engage in practices is the one most important way of getting to a point where you're allowing a Hawaiian to get past what I believe has been the stumbling block for them and why they're in the situation they find themselves in. Mm -hmm. So my answer is no. Okay. Much more needs to be done. Okay. <clears throat> it, it, it's. Hawaiians, well, most of the people in prison, no, no matter who they are, end up coming out. Unfortunately, about 40% of them end up going back in within three years, which is, which is a horrible cycle that we don't seem to be able to break. And uh, in my thinking, uh, you know, one reason that we can't break this cycle of recidivism is that we don't treat people appropriately in prison. We don't really do anything to change behavior in prison. But I think the other reason is that we don't do enough in the community to put people on the right track to begin with. <clears throat> and by the time they come into the prison system at age whatever, 18, 19, 22, most of these are young men, um, it's, it's kind of late, you know, you got a big job on your hands. What, what kinds of things do you, do, you, that are, are, are you, do you think about in the community that you would like to see change, not just in the prison system, but um, in the communities where we have a lot of Native Hawaiians, um, uh, whether it's, uh, you know, access uh, to, to, to places where they can engage in, in Native Hawaiian uh, practices, cultural practices, uh, access to water, access to land. Uh, what, are the, what are the key elements that the Native Hawaiian Legal Corporation wants to focus on to build a better culture generally so that we don't end up with these people in the prison system? So what we have is we, we have rights, and those rights are codified in Hawaii's law. Some of those rights have constitutional protection. Um, 
And what we don't have is those rights actually being transformed into the social, social fabric of a community such that they become commonplace in communities, that it's not, oh, wow, look at, we're going to do this program, but it's, this is what's happening, and this is, is, this is going to become a part of our community. Engaging in traditional and customary practices, i.e. taro growing, um, kappa, uh, all kinds of ways of, of being Hawaiian become a part of the social uh, and moral fabric of, of, our, of our island, of our mm -hmm. state. Uh, and, you know, that's, I think, there are those, those laws but to actually get them into practice is a, is a completely different set of issues. Um, sometimes it's because of resources. Resources are really precious and um, are sometimes um, used by large corporations and, you know, while... Um, for example, large agribusiness has ha had a tight hold on water for generations. And the fact that water hasn't been able to flow through streams has prevented Hawaiians, Hawaiian individuals, Hawaiian families, Hawaiian communities from acting as Hawaiians with respect to the way that you, as a Hawaiian, view and treat water. Okay. We're down to about the last 30 seconds of our, our show already today, Moses, and hope we, hopefully we can have you back again uh, in, in the near future to talk about uh, some of these issues. Um, when, you, when you're talking about changing the community, I was just uh, thinking about the Native Hawaiian Justice Task Force that was formed. They came up with like 38 recommendations and uh, nobody seems to be listening, you know, to the things that uh, that you are saying and that others, uh, particularly Native Hawaiians in the community, are saying. And hopefully, we can do something to change those. But thank you very much for being our guest here today. Look forward to perhaps having you back in the near future. And um, we appreciate your your coming on and sharing your views with us. Uh, this is uh, you, rehabilitation. Bob. You're more than welcome, Moses. This is rehabilitation coming soon. I'm Bob Merce. Uh, that's our, <clears throat> excuse me, our show for the, today. Stay tuned for Sustainable Hawaii with Kristen Turner coming up next. <laughs>